In this video I'll try to illustrate the concept of sigma field or otherwise also known as sigma algebra. So first I will define the concept, I will give the definition of the idea behind sigma field and then I will use it in a couple of examples and hopefully you will f fully understand what the, this is all about. So at first the definition may tell you nothing, in fact it's very vague, but when we apply it um, to a specific case you will see that actually it makes uh, sense. So a set of uh, subsets of omega uh, curly f okay, is called a sigma field or sigma algebra if it satisfies the three uh, properties. The first property says that our omega must be a member of uh, f. Property number two F is closed under complementation. What this means is that if a subset A belongs to F, then so is its complement, often denoted as you know uh, A uh, to the power of C. So this complement must also be in the su set of subsets F. Property number three: F is closed under count countable unions. What this means is that if A and B belong to F, then so is their union. Okay. Now, from property number three, uh, and using the Morgan's law, we can also extend this definition and say that our F is not only closed under countable unions, but it's also closed under intersections. Yeah, and it follows from this law, where say A intersection B equals uh, complement of A union complement of C in brackets uh, and the complement of this. Here I'll give you an, an alternative statement of the, the Morgan's uh, law. Therefore we can summarize property number two and three using this sentence. A sigma algebra is a collection of subsets which is closed under some countable set operations, i.e. if a set X can be obtained from subsets in F through complementation, union or intersection then X is also a member of F. Okay, I wouldn't be surprised at this stage if you actually haven't um, understood anything from this definition, but just bear with me for a second and you it will all become clear when we actually do a couple of examples. So now let's start with a brief warm-up uh, on sets. So our task here is to color shade the um, set operation that is given above the uh, the kind of the square. Okay, so here we have A intersection B. Well, where do the two circles intersect? Somewhere here, okay? So that's our region uh, of intersection. Now here um, we have A intersection B not or not. So anything that's not in the intersection. Well, if this is interse intersection here, then this is not an in inter intersection, this is not in the intersection, and this is not in the intersection. Therefore it follows that A, not A intersection B, is actually this white, uh, this everything that's yellow. Okay. Now the not part is often indicated with a prime sign. And now our favorite, the Morgan's Law, Okay, it says A union B not, or Anything that's not in the union of A and B, well, if this is, if what I'm shading right now is actually uh, A union B, so the stuff that's not in the A union B must be here in red, yeah. So what the Morgan the Morgan law says that this A that's not A union B is the same as not A intersection with not B. So the question now is, what is not in A? Well, this stuff is not in A, and this stuff is not in A. Okay. Another question is, what is the stuff that's not in B? Well, the stuff that's not in B is this here in blue, but also the stuff that's in A here. Yeah. So the question is, where do these not A, not B regions intersect? And the answer is, not in A intersect not in B is actually just this green green region here, which is the same as the the, uh, the green region here. Another version of the Morgan the Morgan's law states that A intersection B, which is here, is the same as not not in A or not in B. So let's start start with the expression inside the brackets. Uh, what's not in A? Well, not in A is this stuff and this stuff. 
Now, what's not in B? Well, not in B would be this stuff and this stuff, okay? So, what's not in A or not in B? Well, I would try to shade it with gray. Well, this is this, this, and that, okay? Therefore, but we have still the, the C outside, the, the complement outside the brackets to evaluate. So, what's not, not in A or not in B? Well, clearly, this is uh, this one, the, the stuff that I just, the, sh the region I shaded uh, in green, which is the same as A intersection B. So now we have our warm-up uh, with sets um, behind us. We can go and finally do some exercises with sigma algebra. We reach a stage where you can do some um, exercises. So we are given here our omega, which is our universe of outcomes. So this, this is just listing all possib uh, possible outcomes that our experiment can have. We are told that our omega is made of one, two and three, okay? And the question is, question A, is the trivial set defined here as T, which is made of, which has two subsets, one is an empty set and the other one is omega, a sigma field, okay? Well, thanks God, we actually uh, state the definition, so we can now one by one uh, check whether this definition holds against our trivial set T. So the first criterion is Omega is a member of F. Well, indeed, Omega is a member of F, so we can just give it a check for this first condition. Second condition says F is closed under complementation, so if A belongs to F, then so must its complement. Okay, so say here our Omega is our uh, subset A, and we are told that if Omega belongs to, to a set, then so must its complement. And what's a complement of omega? Well, it's the null set, the empty set, yeah? So um, let's check if an empty, our empty set is actually part of uh, our subset T, sorry, it's set T. Indeed, uh, the empty set is part of the set T. So second condition is met. And then third condition says, F is closed under countable unions, okay, so, and intersections as well here. So let's see if we can try to find unions and intersections of our subsets here in T and see if they are also as well part of or if they also belong to the set T. So let's find out. So what's empty set union omega? Okay, this is just omega. And omega is obviously a member of set T. How about this? What's the intersect of omega and um, empty set? Well, this is just empty set, yeah? So this, this one, this set operation asks a question, what's common to both sets? An empty set and a set with, with uh, one to three in it. Well, there's nothing, nothing common. They don't share anything common, and therefore it's just a null set. So, the null set is essentially equivalent of zero in in algebra. Okay, so we just verified that all intersections, all unions, and all complements of our sets within the set of subsets T are actually members of the set of set of subsets T, and therefore our set of subsets T met all the three criterion this one, this one, and this one to be qualified a sigma field so we can conclude that indeed set A is a sigma field, okay? Next question I will go slightly faster here, a B is our set of subsets Z in, which has the following subsets in it empty set, omega 1 and 2, 3 and 2 and 3, a sigma field. Now, without looking at the definition, because you probably have a very good intuition of what the definition states for a sigma field, let's just pick up uh, one of the subsets here, 1 and 2, and let's just check if, uh, say, its complement, okay, here I would just denote the complement of C, would be what? Well, if our omega is 1, 2, 3, okay, then the complement of uh, 1 and 2 would be just uh, a subset 3. 
is subset 3 part of, or does it belong to, the set of subsets Z? Yes, indeed, it belongs. So we give it a check. Well, how about this one? Let's take another, uh, another s uh, subset, 2 and 3, and let's find out whether the complement of this uh, subset is actually in the set of subsets Z. The complement of subsets uh, so of, of subset 2 and 3 is just 1. And 1 doesn't seem like it's showing up anywhere here. Therefore, we can conclude straight away that set of subset Z is not, yeah, it's not a sigma field. Okay, and so let's do one more example. Here, point C is the power set denoted here as 2 to the power of sigma a sigma field. Quick reminder what a power set is. Power set is a set of all subsets of omega, including the empty set and omega itself. So in our case we would have 2 to the power of 3, i.e. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 8 subsets overall. Yeah. So here I listed what our power set on our omega is. Okay, omega is our universe. We would have an empty set, omega itself, we would have 1, 2, 3, 1 and 2, 2, 3, 2 and 3, and 1 and 3 as subsets of the power set. And it turns out that if you were to apply the same logics and find all the intersections, unions and complements of these sets within the, within the power set, it would meet the definition of a sigma field. I will leave it to you as an exercise. All you have to do is just try to, for instance, you know, take any two random sets, 1 and 2 and 1 and 3, and see if, say, union of these two is actually in the omega set, and then try to find whether intersection is, and then try to find whether complements of these are part of these, uh, this um, power set. If you can satisfy all these conditions, then you will find out that actually that power set meets the definition of a sigma field. Yeah. Uh, let me let me just summarize a few bits here. In the first example, we saw a set of subsets which was only made of two subsets, one which was omega and the other one was an empty set, and it turns out that there is a specific name for this type of subset. It's called a trivial sigma algebra. Okay, also called minimal sigma algebra. It's called this way because it has the least number of elements. Okay, now on the other extreme, we've got the power, the power set, which is the largest sigma algebra of omega of our universe. It can be therefore stated without proof that our sigma algebra will be kind of uh, oscillating within certain bounds. On the left side, you will have the trivial set, the set with the least number of elements and still meeting the definition of a sigma algebra. And on the other extreme, you will have a power set, which is the set of all subsets of omega, which also meets the definition of the sigma algebra. Okay, so sigma algebra would be kind of confined within within this space.